as a spirit of witchcraft. And God said, he suffered not that a witch shall live. See, when the Amalekites did what they did to the children of Israel, he told, uh, he told, he had Samuel to anoint Saul. And Saul, you're going to be the one that's going to wipe off the face of the earth. And Saul didn't do what God said. That's right. That's right. And, God, and God was so upset with him. When Samuel went to Emily, when he, when he, saw, when he heard all the cows mooing, the Bible say he took a sword and cut Emily down to the ground. Butchered him. Because what he did to the children of Israel. And see, David had joined up with the Philistine. And Asham loved David because David had proved himself. But you know what? God know how to do. The Lord of the Philistine didn't trust David. They said, yeah, we get over there and we get to fight. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to join back with Saul and then kill us. Because they were scared of David. That's the same David. The women holler. Well, Saul killed his thousand. David killed his ten thousand. No, we don't need him. The Lord told, they told Asim, we're not, we're not even going to battle if David is here. Send him back. And when David and them came to Ziklag, the Amalekites, the same devils, they had invaded the south and they burned. And when the men got there, they cried so they couldn't weep anymore. David's two wives, a whole him, Abigail, Nabal's wife, the fool. David was crying too. See, you have to believe sometimes people need somebody else to point the finger and say, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. It ain't never theirs. And they were pointing the finger at David and saying, you know what? If we had a business, this wouldn't have happened. And then the same people that David been fighting with, they were talking about stoning. You have to tell the Bible to bring me the ephah. And he inquired of the Lord, do I go after this troop? And if I go, will I prevail? And the Lord spoke and said, go, and thou shalt recover. Oh. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? You're going to recover all. Oh. You have to remember some spiritual fatigue can work on you. When you've been believing God for something and look like it's not going to happen, Look like it get right to your fingertips, then it disappears. That can work on you. When you want your ministry to grow and your health get in the way, it can work on you. You got to remember something. Nothing happens that God doesn't have under control. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? I know some people have a hard time adjusting to it. Those people that got healed at that Walmart in El Paso, that was God's will. No eyes except God say so. The devil does not have power over life and death. That power belonged to God. Even down in Egypt, when Pharaoh's magician threw the dust in there, and when Moses, I mean, so Moses and Aaron threw the dust in there and it turned into lice and fly. They said, we can't do that. Say, this is the finger. When Job's situation, the Lord told Job, what did he tell? the devil had to ask for permission. He said, you can do all you want to, but touch his life. Hear me, people. You can't go nowhere except God say it's your I don't care what you're going through. If you can believe the prayer of faith will save the sick, the Lord will raise them up. That's scripture. But you have to deal with this thing in your rehabbing, in keeping yourself positive, even though you can't see it right now. What are you saying, Pastor? Apostle? I'm saying this. I don't see right now. I don't see you all. I see every one of these seats full. I see two or three of them over there waiting on, waiting on an opportunity to play. I see rings around the wall where people are standing up and their heads been rubbing. We got to paint. I don't see this. I ain't talking to y'all. You got to stay positive. Woo, I see all kind of brothers. People standing everywhere doing what they're supposed to do. Why? Because God's going to do what he's going to do. 
Can anybody hear what I'm saying? You got to stay positive. You got to tell yourself every farmer when he plant, he plants in hope. He's telling himself, when I put these seeds in the ground, they're coming up. Yeah. He ain't looking well. I don't know. No. He's positive. That's why he's out there doing all that hard work. Putting, dropping all those seeds because he said, man, woo, look at the yield I'm going to have. Matter of fact, he's thinking about where I'm going to build a new barn. In. I got to try, and, the, and the stuff ain't even yet. That's positive. man got 50 heifers out there and he just go and buy him a big Brangus bull. Man, almost 3,000 pounds. He got humps everywhere, muscles sticking out. Don't you know, man, he, he's out. He ain't looking at the, at the He's looking at the calves that's in the bull. People talking about the cattle on a thousand hills, man. You know what? God, I ain't looking at the cattle on the hill. I'm looking at the, the bull and the cows and the calves that's in the cows. like that. Pay your tithe. Pay your tithe. Give God here and watch God deliver. Prove God and see what God do what he say. But when you don't, you curse yourself. You add to your misery. Stay positive. Stay positive. Don't try to do too many things at one time. Be one thing. Work that and work it. Just work it. Work it. When I decided I was going to be a carpenter, I decided I let everything else go. I focused on being a carpenter. You know what I said? I said, I'm going to be the best. Well, I'm going to be the best. If I'm going to be a carpenter, I'm going to be the best. You know what that means? That's challenging you. That's challenging your skills. Woo! When you tell yourself, I'm going to be the best, that means you're going to step up. You're going to give it all. You're going to be mediocre. You're going to be satisfied with just this. You want your stuff. You want your reputation to precede you. One day I got a, got a phone call from a man. And he asked me to meet him at Denny's up on 635. I know that street. And I met him. And I was sitting in there at Denny's. And he walked in and he saw me. Young Caucasian man. He said, you Harold Rogers? I said, yes. He said, they told me about you. He said, I got a problem. Money is not an issue. He said, I got some houses that these investors built. They got their money, and they moved back to Canada. People now, the mortgage companies have put mortgages. The people won't pay their house note because the service warranty work is not being done. He said, money is not an issue. I took the job. I had my guys working, but we were rolling. We were rolling. We were rolling. There's a little, there's a blue, greenish, about a six-story glass building behind the gallery by the guitar shop. I'd go in there and go to the second floor. I'd walk up to the counter. i say, I'm Harold Rogers. They'd give me my check. I told Sister Rogers, I said, I'm going to jail. Just what you talking about, boy. I said, I'm going to jail. They're going to say, I'm supposed to be making this kind of money. God was blessing. I was rolling. But what I'm saying, you got to yourself positive. You got to tell yourself, and you know what? When I walked all my guys had on pinstripe shirts, blue pants with the name First Class Remodeling and their name on it. You didn't come to work with no knees out and all kind of ripped up the bottom. You got a towel behind you looking like you're an Indian or something. No, we ain't doing that. We're going to look professional. My men, I had an eight-man crew, and we had, let me tell you something, they had 11 uniforms. They, had, they would drop five and pick up six. And I was paying for all of you. We were rolling. Then one day the Lord said, let it go. I said, Satan, I bind you. Hard as I got to get where I am, you're going to tell me. I know this ain't God. I bind you. He said, let it go. I let off everybody. Walked away from the start passing the church. You got to think positive. When we, when we were on peace tree and we needed a place to worship, Brother Davenport and I went all the way to uh, South down there, I took blueprints and all that because I was looking at this property, going in the mesquite over there where those horses used to graze, just on the right-hand side. And, I, and I'm looking at that, and a, uh, an Indian doctor had it. And I called him and talked to him. I went to the city and got aerial shots and all this kind of stuff, maps. Took it with me. Going down to the sea, down there, worked so hard. It was a vacation to come back, cutting limbs and climbing trees. 
<laughs> doing this, I said, God, let me get back to Texas. Please, let me get back to Texas. But the Lord bless me, got back to Texas. When I, when I left, when I got ready to leave, I'll never forget. When I got ready to leave, Brother Slater called me. He said, Pastor, he said, did the Lord tell you what to do? I said, all he told me to do was follow his lead. He said, follow, that's all he told me, follow his lead. We left South Carolina, got back here on a Thursday. Got back here on a Thursday, Sunday morning, we was having service. And after service was over, I'm in there changing clothes. And they said, Pastor, an elderly white man want to see you out here. I came out of the office. I walked up to him. He shook my hand. He introduced himself to me. He said, I came by to see if you wanted to buy a church. He said, I've been trying to get, get in touch with you for over two weeks. I said, I've been out of town for the past. I said, somebody needs to slap me because I must be dreaming. He asked me, he said, can you church? I knew where it was. I came in. He had just had surgery. He was laying gallbladder. Lay on this bench. There was a little organ sit right here. And his wife was sitting over there and we were talking. And he told me, he said, some Muslim offered him 250000 for this building, cash. He said, I would have been out of the will of God. I sold it to anybody but you. He turned that down. And while we were talking, I told him what I would give him. Then I turned around and told him, said, you know what? I'm going to give you 50000 down. I him have 50000 And the Holy Ghost rebuked me and said, now you're going to just take it out of my hand. I said, Lord, forgive me. A few days later, he was at doctor's hospital out there sick, in the hospital again. And I walked and he was sitting in the foyer area with a hospital gown and the IV on a stand and when I walked up to him big tears were rolling down his face I never met this man but he didn't know him so his wife say they were going home and he dived into the parking lot down on Peach Street jumped out of the car left at the Lincoln Continental he was there left the door open she said where you going he said I got to go talk to this preacher God was doing all that and I didn't know it when I walked in the hospital that day, he was sitting there with, a, with an IV in that seat. I walked up to him, God's my witness. When I walked up to him, big tears were rolling down his face. And he was sitting there saying, I don't want you in a strain. I don't want you. And I said, what is he saying? He said, I don't want you in a strain. Then he looked up at me, tears rolling down his face. He said, I'm Moses. You're Joshua. And you're going to take the ministry on. He said, give me $5,000. Let's write it up. God took the down payment down for God took the down payment down forty five thousand dollars. I'm walking around the building over here on this side, lot over there on that side. Hello. And the lot over here was was vacant. And the Lord spoke to me and said, "Not many days hence you're gonna." I came in and told the congregation. We went out and found the man that owned the property. When I found the man that owned the property, I'm telling him what to do. And I asked him, I said, how much you want for it? I'm going to just tell y'all. He told me, he said, all I'm going to do is take up the note. He said, I had a friend of mine that was a fireman, but he had a problem gambling. And he forfeited on the note. He said, I just want somebody to take up the note. The note was $48,000. 48,000. Oh, I'm good. I'm, I, I got it now. It's working. Ain't nothing but the devil. Buying all them cyberspace demons. Man, we got the land. Do you not know? I'm talking to, after we met and he came over and I told him, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $5,000 down. He said, Pastor, I don't need no upfront money. He said, I'm a fireman, but I sell real estate too. He said, I just sold a, a, a car wash and an apartment complex and I made a million dollars. He said, you write it up and I'll sign it. We paid that piece of property off. We don't know a dime on it. Praise it over half a million. God's a miracle working God. You got to stay positive. Amen. Knowing if God told you to do a thing, do it. Keep yourself. What the boy Scott said, on my honor, I'll, I'll give my best to do my duty, to obey the sky law, to keep myself mentally strong, uh, physically strong. Uh, I'll get in a little bit. I used to rattle that stuff. You ought to know it. I used to know it. I could just say all that stuff. But you, do you not know? You have to keep yourself mentally awake and morally straight. You have to do that. You have to work on you. You have to work on your head. When the devil starts bringing junk to you and telling you stuff to try to tell you and discourage you, know what you got to do? Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Say that knee is bad. You're a lie. You're a lie. In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. In Je- I'm binding you in Jesus' name. I'm going to give me a stick. Now, I bind. I don't put my hand on a walking stick. When I pray for folk and God deliver, I don't even get there. I say, I don't want to touch it. We used to play on crutches. I learned not to do that. Got that leg broke. I don't play on crutches no more. I don't care who go. <laughs> Bless you. Keep yourself. Keep yourself. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Staying positive. If I drink water out of this glass, it's going to go down. But if I have a hose over here and run it, it's going to stay full. Do you know you got to work on this up here? Because the devil will play tricks on you, baby. Oh, I ain't getting no help right now. He'll start asking, you, what's happening to you? What you mean, what's happening to me? I'm getting older. Stuff's supposed to happen. But the Lord said he's going to renew my youth as the eagle. Uh huh. I ain't crazy though. I'm not going out there and cut the yard at 12 o'clock in the daytime in a 102 degree weather. I know better than that. Well, amen. amen. That's when they have buggies at the grocery store and stuff. Roll them out. I don't have to try to prove myself going out there carrying everything. I got a, two cases of water. Devil is alive. I get a buggy. Right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Wait, listen, people. You got to work on this. Because the devil will show you your buddies, he'll show you your friends, your brothers, and your sisters. Look what they got. But they're going to hell if they don't get saved. Hey, come on, come on. You don't want to say that. And David, when you look in that chapter, 18 and 19, the Bible said, verses 18 and 19 say, And David recovered. Let me tell you something, baby. If God say it, it's coming to pass. Do your spiritual rehab and do it with a smile. Don't regret it. Don't regret it. I don't say it for no hot dog. I've gotten used to now. I, wait, I don't even set the clock. I wake up somewhere between 4 or 4.30 almost every morning. I don't care what time I go to bed. I'm going to wake up around 4 or 4.30 every morning. I got my little prayer spot. I used to use clinics, but I couldn't keep enough clinics. So I found me some of that real soft charm and tissue. And before I start praying, I tear me off so much because I know I'm about to blow my nose and cry and all this. I have my trash can sitting there. But I'm going to get my prayer in. And I'm asking God to bless the saints. God bless, bless this house. Bless, bless Corsicana. Bless the saints of God. Sometimes I'm down there, people's faces come up and say, God, make ways open door for then sometimes you just want to just get there and just talk to God and let him talk to you listen don't faint pray but stay positive I don't care what's going through what you're going through tell yourself God's getting me ready for a blessing I don't care if the hook came and got your car you know what God's getting ready to bless me with a new one wow look at the natural side I think it was Art Letter Walt Disney declared bankruptcy seven times and still came back. People that went down to the bottom and they came back up. You got to make up in your mind that God, just like the Lord was with Joseph, tell you God's with me. I'm coming out. How many got the message tonight? Everybody's standing to your feet tonight. I'm going to stay positive. I don't care what happens. I don't care what comes, what goes. I'm going to stay